A little while ago, we refurbished this PS2 on the channel. At the time, I mostly just wanted to get it working, reading games, functioning correctly, stock. But today, I wanted to dive into some of the homebrew scene when it comes to the hardware and software. Different things I can install with this device to make it a bit more convenient. It's been a little while since I've worked on any of the homebrew stuff with the PS2. I mean, I think at the time, the 360 was still considered new. So I thought it'd be interesting to go back and kind of see where we are now with it. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So first, let's talk about what I want to do here exactly. The biggest thing is I want to install a hard drive inside the PS2 and have the ability to take any of my physical games and just rip them to the hard drive. That way I can go through a menu, select and play, and make it very, very easy. And at the time, this again was around the time the 360 was still kind of new. So I think it was like 2007, 2008, we were able to do that, but there were some limitations, which appear to kind of been ironed out now. For example, just getting that functionality to the PS2 was a bit tricky because you had to have a certain file on your memory card the problem was you couldn't really just go out and buy one at the time. People were actually passing around files on the memory cards. They would set up times to meet up and you basically had to know someone who had that certain kind of memory card. And this was like free McBoot. Now though, you can just go on Amazon and buy it and it'll show up to your house in like a day. So I decided to do that just to see what we'd get. And this is the free McBoot. It's just a PS2 memory card that has that file installed. They say it's plug and play and it's the latest version software, which is probably out of date now because I did order this <laughs> a little while ago. But we have all the custom applications that they outline here. But the big one, like I said, that I was interested in was the HD loader. They also have the ability to play things off of a USB drive if you'd like or USB hard drive. And you can even just play uh, out of region games as well very easily. It all comes kind of packaged in this box. So let's open it up. And it is indeed just a PS2 third party memory card that has that file on it. It does have a pretty lengthy guide here to sort of get you started. And this isn't like a piece of like paper or anything that's really cheap. This looks like some time went into into this to make it, I guess, as straightforward as it can be in a bunch of different languages. Anyway, that's step one, the free McBoot memory card. We'll just have to plug that into the PS2 when it starts up. And from there, we can just choose any of the applications we want to use. I specifically pointed out HD loader, however, and the reason for that is I want to install a SATA hard drive into this PS2. At the time when I was doing this, we could only really use IDE drives. In order to hook an IDE drive up, we need this network adapter. See, it even says HDD on the back here for the PS2. This was an official accessory and it was mostly used for, from what I can tell, Final Fantasy XI. I mean, seriously, I, I, I don't know if there was really any other game that used the hard drive like that, but obviously Final Fantasy XI was an MMORPG and you'd have patches and updates that would have to be installed to something that was larger than an eight megabyte memory card. When you bought Final Fantasy XI, you got like a, an entire 40 gigabyte IDE hard drive to install into your PS2 and you would need this because it did have a LAN port on the back to connect. Now at the time I did use IDE drives. It was frustrating even back then, more so now because we are well beyond IDE drives being any kind of standard at all, right? So finding one that's one in good shape because most of them are older now and two just in a good size, all that's difficult. Good news is as things have progressed for the PS2, we can see a board that will replace this and allow us to use a SATA hard drive, which is way easier to find. In fact, I have a couple of them just kind of hanging out here as extras and we'll install one of those after I get this into the network adapter. I have not done this before, but the instructions make it out to be pretty simple in that this is a board. Yep, it's connected through a ribbon cable. So this is just gonna sit there and replace that guy. There's also another cable on the back here. That Yeah, that's for power. So we're gonna unplug both of these, plug this in and just get everything hooked up. All right, so our new board is installed here. Ribbon cable plugged in, some power here. And shout out to Sony for going from Phillips head screws on the outside of the network adapter to torque screws on the inside. That was one of the more frustrating things uh, at that time, but looks like we'll just sit it down there. This is still gonna have to peek through the plastic and that cable there is kind of pushing around a bit. All right, and all the screws are back in here. We have the SATA port sticking out 
of the metal frame here for the network adapter. Looks like it's lining up fine for this hard drive I have here. I have a couple hard drives I'll try. I'd like to get this one working though if I can. It's a two terabyte Seagate drive, but it looks like it fits up just fine there. So I'll install that in the PS2. They do make brackets for these as well. They're on like Amazon. There's like 3D printed brackets for the hard drive to sit in a bit better for the PS2. I don't have one of those here right now. So what I'll do is just kind of lay it in here and I'll install that later, but it should still at least be able to hold fine to try some of the stuff out today. Okay, so we have the Seagate drive here. Just sits in like that. And then I'll just go ahead and tighten these screws up and we'll have a PS2 ready to go with an internal hard drive. Well, so far so good. We have our method to run homebrew applications and now we have a PS2 with an installed uh, two terabyte hard drive. And now we have to figure out how we're gonna plug it into say an HDMI enabled TV because there's no HDMI out for the PS2 currently. I will say I've been uh, checking around a bit I do believe we're going to see some sort of, I'll say higher quality uh, HDMI solution for the PS2 in the next year or two. It, it does sound like that there have been issues as we've seen with the chip shortage and component prices going up that have sort of put some, uh, some, some hurdles in the way of that. But I would like to eventually get to a point where I can install an HDMI modification internally, like I've done with a bunch of other systems, the Nintendo 64, the PS1, the Dreamcast. I think we'll get there with the PS2. But for now, we do have some solutions on Amazon, like this one, for example. It's a very generic looking box for it, but it does have a PlayStation 2 HDMI adapter. So I will get some direct footage of this through a capture card and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so the PS2 system is on with that memory card inserted that has McBoot on it. It automatically will jump you to this screen with free McBoot at the top. I wanted to go into HD loader to see if I need to like format the hard drive or anything. Oh good, it immediately asked if I want to format it. Okay, so the two terabyte drive failed for some reason, but I installed the one terabyte drive. That seemed to go through fine, and it says it has uh, 928 gigabytes free. So I think that's still plenty of space for PlayStation 2 games to be installed. So now what we can do here with this menu is we can take our PS2 games like Killzone, drop it in the disk drive itself, and it will rip to the hard drive. While the installation's in progress, I'm curious how long it's gonna take, but looking at the current speed, yeah, about half an hour to install a disk. Now that's also gonna change depending on how large the disc is like if it's say Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex this is on a CD of course it's a blue bottom disc that would be much less than Killzone which is four gigabytes in size but either way these these disc drives weren't exactly known for their speed that generation anyway while we're waiting for this to to happen let's talk a little bit about why I think now is a good time to get into the PlayStation 2 generation I know we're like two decades late on that one, but I, I think at this time, the PS2 is lagging a bit behind all the other systems. Like the GameCube is becoming more and more rare. And believe it or not, the, even the original Xbox, I've noticed prices around those are starting to climb a bit online, but the PS2, not as much. And it, it makes sense, right? The PS2 sold over 150 million consoles, which means they're very plentiful, whereas the original Xbox was like 25 or 26 million, the GameCube was a little less than that. And because of that, you'd have games that would come out for the GameCube and the Xbox didn't print nearly as many as the PS2. Now, it's not to say that there aren't expensive PS2 games because there certainly are, but when you compare it to like the GameCube or the PS1, the overall average price of games is not nearly as high. It's not as low as what we see with the original Xbox because the price on those games are still fairly low overall, but the PS2 I think is still in a good range now to take a look and maybe pick some titles up, especially as the PS2 continues to get more and more support and even more and more breakthroughs when it comes to the third party homebrew scene. I mean, the fact that I can just pick up a SATA drive, drop it in the system like this, get a memory card that pops into the front and 
all of a sudden I'm ripping games to it and being able to run all types of homebrew is much better than, like I said, back when I originally tried this. I mean, it's impressive stuff. The fact that you don't have to do like any internal modification here. You just get a certain memory card with McBoot on it, drop it in and you're good to go. And I did install hard drive inside this system, but you can also run things through the USB port on the front. You can just get an external drive if you have a slim PS2 and install stuff to that, no problem. I think we're even seeing memory cards that have SD slots on the front, so you can install like an SD card and run games off of that. I feel like now I'm sort of conditioned to sit here and wait for a bar to fill up when I put a game in the system with the PS5 or the Xbox series. Even if I buy it on the digital storefront, I have to wait for it to download. The only nice thing here is these games came with manuals that you could kind of look through and kill time with because, you know, games actually came complete back then. All right, installation is complete and there's Killzone. So I ripped the game with HD Loader and I jumped over to OPL, which apparently is like a better one to use for launching games and, and going through them. It also enables you to go through USB games here, but because I ripped Killzone to the hard drive, we have it here, I can just hit run. And there we go, Killzone loads right up. Well, it's definitely a first person shooter from the, the mid 2000s. I, this was when these companies were really trying to figure things out. I mean, we had like time splitters, which was cool and obviously Halo, but for the most part, everyone was just sort of trying different things to, to see how a, a first person shooter would do on consoles. And it took until like the following generation when we had Call of Duty Modern Warfare really explode in popularity, but it was interesting to see Sony take a shot with something like Killzone and they stuck with it up until like what the PS4 generation and since then Gorilla kind of moved on to other stuff, but I guess you never know. We could, we could see something else happen here at some point with all the live service games they're working on. I guess never say never with something like Killzone. I popped the blue bottom disc in. This is Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. It should be, oh, this one's 446 megabytes. So quite a bit smaller than what we were just dealing with for Killzone. Crash Bandicoot loads up no problem. I don't really know how much faster it is in terms of load times here, but here's a load screen going into the first world. The nice thing is I don't hear the disk drive spinning up at all because there's no disk in there. And the hard drive is quieter where it is com compared to where the disk would be. Uh, so that that's a nice thing. In fact, if I can get that fan worked out with a better fan, the Noctua fan, this system will be pretty, I think, pretty quiet overall. So not bad there. Faster load times and the system is, I'd say, audibly better overall. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for the PlayStation 2. And a quick look at the homebrew scene, which as I'm looking more and more into it, seems like it has continued to really evolve and move on since I looked at it last but it is impressive stuff what people have been able to accomplish on, I mean, hardware from 2000, 2001, right? But I think it's definitely a system worth looking into now, especially as we get better and more modern video solutions for this original hardware. I think it will become more and more popular to go back to this system again. And some of the cool stuff they've been able to do with the homebrew scene, being able to rip games to SATA hard drives or play them off of external drives or even send them from your PC to the system through the network adapter. I mean, it's impressive stuff overall. It's not necessarily new to, uh, I'm sure, some of you out there, but if it is, hey, let me know what you think about this. And if you've been using Free McBoot for a while and have a good knowledge of the homebrew scene for the PS2, let me know a bit more about all of this in the comments. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.